amen to the full Lord in prayer. Heavenly Father, as we come together this morning and as we sing a song like this, I pray that every person here that is born again, every Christian person, understands that it is our job to send the light. It is our job to witness whenever and wherever we can. I thank you, Lord, for each one that is here this morning. And I pray for those that aren't able to be with us for whatever reason it might be. I pray, Father, for your word. You be with our pastor as he brings the word you put upon his heart. Feed us in the name of Jesus. Amen. Amen. You may be seated. In the way of announcements, at the bottom of the page, you notice just a, a few things. Labor Day, September 2nd, of course, coming Monday. No school. Uh, in St. Tammany Parish, as well as in other parishes as well, be aware of that. First day of, of fall is the 23rd. This coming Thursday, there will be a funeral service at Hanukkah, right there on 190. For those of you who don't know, Miss Gloria Rodriguez, Ginger's sister, Dolores' sister, Al's sister-in-law, passed away yesterday at 5.30 in the morning due to Alzheimer's. It's hard for us, but it's better for her. She is in a lot better place, and now she's all better. No longer is she with that disease where she didn't know anybody. Now she knows everybody, and everybody knows her as well. And so she's with the Lord, and I know my condolences, of course, to both Ginger and Dolores, Al, and each and every one here. But just remember, she's doing better. So if you can uh, make it, if you would like to make it, it'll be coming this coming Thursday, 11 o'clock, will be the funeral at Hanukkah Funeral Home for Miss Gloria. Uh, visitation, I, I guess, nine, nine o'clock? Nine to eleven for friends? Yeah. Friends? Okay, because I know the family gets there earlier. Yeah, I think they change it to eight to nine, and then nine on Okay, so if you want to, okay, so if you want to go to the, come to the funeral home before the eleven o'clock service, you can come anywhere between nine and eleven o'clock. Um, usually I'll tell you if you want to stay at 10, 10.30, it would be fine and just come and the service will begin at 11 o'clock at, at Hanukkah, right there on 190. Well, I think everyone here knows where Hanukkah is located, right down the road here. I tell them it's between Cowell Road and Huntwick. That's a low stretch right there. And I think everybody knows where it's at, but that's where it's going to be at. And that's this coming Thursday at 11 o'clock so you know. Um, also, in the pews, you will see that we have envelopes here. We'll be starting collecting for Georgia Barnett for the month of September. Um, there are some um, information about Georgia Barnett uh, mission work being done. That's, be that's work being done here in Louisiana for different things. There's one on the back wall in the foyer and there's another one in the hallway there where you can take a look at what uh, and where the, the funds and the money go to when we do this. Now, 100% of the money that's collected for Georgia Burnett does go to mission work. Um, and it's, and again, that's also uh, shown the percentage wise of what goes where uh, on there. So if you want to take a look at that. So if you would like to give to that, you can put that in there and do so. Now I ask that you give over and above what you may give for the working of the church. Don't give it in place of uh, the working and what we do here at Bayou Baptist Church. But if you would like to give a dollar or five dollars, whatever, do so. And then we'll see to it that it's forwarded to uh, Georgia Barnett. This is a Southern Baptist um, mission work that is done in Louisiana. So be, be aware of that. So we'll be collecting that for the month of, uh, of September. Also, you can find us on Facebook and also on YouTube as well. 
so be aware of that. Uh, also, if you would like to take a book or a video, there are some back in the youth classroom on the uh, bookshelf. Help yourself to it after church. There's no signing out or anything. Just take, just go ahead and take a book, and you can read it. If you want to pass it on, you can. If you want to bring it back, you can. That's up to you. No timetable, and it's, it's fine. So there are books back there as well as DVDs that you can uh, read. If you would like to give uh, a book or a DVD uh, that's of Christian concern, you can do so. Just, just bring them here, and that, that's fine as well. So, just want you to be aware of those things. Anything else we need to be aware of, of anything else going on or taking place? Anything at all? If not, Mr. Al, come and lead us in another hymn, sir. 447, Trust and Obey. people that we continually on a daily basis pray for, especially the men and women in the military and their families and many who are deployed and away from their families, remember them in prayer, Christian missionaries throughout the world that are proclaiming the gospel, and also those in nursing homes and also in hospitals as well. Again, we want to remember the family of Gloria, Ginger, Dolores, Al, May, and uh, her sons, Ricky and Ronnie Rodriguez, as well as the grandkids. Uh, how many grandkids? She's got three, four? Four. Four? 
Yeah. Four. Yeah. Four. Yeah. Four. Yeah. Four. 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 Okay. <laughs> okay. Okay. So okay. So. Uh, so remember all the family, as well as each and every one of us who knew Ms. Gloria, but understand that she is in far better place now, as we know, and all of one mind, and that's a good thing as well. Uh, traveling mercies for a few people that are traveling and a few people that will be traveling as well. Uh, Shell and Brandy are in Clearwater, Florida. Shell is in a convention right now uh, in Florida, so they'll be... They'll be, they're there now until what, Wednesday, I think? Yeah, I th Wednesday. I think, yeah, I think they're flying back on Wednesday sometime. Uh, so, traveling mercies for them as they are in clear water as, as uh, Shell is at a conference for that. Um, traveling mercies for, for Victor and Cynthia. They're traveling back from San Antonio. He sent me a text yesterday saying he's, he was in San Antonio and he's traveling back this morning. From there, they go. They go there from time to time. They go to Houston a lot. They, they I think they got family there that live there, so they're they're always going there as well, more than we are now. Since my daughter is in San Antonio, so they they, they go there quite often. For them, it's boop, they just stop. But it's a it's a ten hour trip just to go to San Antonio. People don't realize just how far it is. It is it's six hundred miles away. And so it, it takes a little bit to get going here, but traveling mercies for them. Also, Johnny and Debbie Garrett, they too, they are, they are going to be leaving next Sunday, and they're going to be doing a whole month of traveling. So they're not going to be with us for the month of September, so they're going all up along the East Coast. Is that right? So they're, go, they're going to Georgia, they're going to New York, they're going to Maine, going to different places. You have to talk to them after church. And, you can, they can tell you they, they're going to quite a few places and uh, and so forth. So traveling mercies and be praying for them as they will be traveling for the whole month of uh, of September and going along the East Coast. Uh, uh, them too, as well. So that will be a good time. So give them uh, <coughs> traveling mercies for them. But also we want to pray for the different people that are still dealing with different health issues and health problems. Johnny is he still battling and he still gets treatments for his cancer, remember him. Debbie Garrett with her neck and her arms and her shoulders, remember her in prayer as she's dealing with that. I remember her in prayer. Mr. Billy Lynch's family, <clears throat> pray for Ronnie and Harvey and uh, Miss Ruby and Dovey, Lawrence and Barbara, the whole crew. Ain't that right, Mr. Bill? The whole crew. <laughs> And, and, and I know you have to have some physical problems, right? I don't know what's wrong with you. <laughs> <laughs> You're the only one that don't have anything going on right now, right? Yeah. That's good, but I mean, but just remember his family uh, in prayer. They're all dealing with different health issues and health problems, so, uh, but just remember them in prayer. Huh? <laughs> but we never know from day to day, that's right. Uh, but just but just remember them in prayer and pray for them also uh, and what they're dealing with. Uh, Bobby and Bobby and Glenda's dad, uh, Bobby's, Bob, Bobby uh, and Irene, remember both of them, Bobby with his failing health and what he's dealing with, and of course, Mom, Irene, as she takes care of hubby, remember them too in prayer and what, and what she deals with. Of course, we want to continue to remember Ginger, as she's still recuperating from her knee surgery that she had. She's doing good. Glad to see her here. But remember her in prayer, as she still has some physical problems. Dolores, too. She has some heart problems, and she still deals with some things. And, of course, Al also. So all three of them deal with health issues that they are dealing with. Um, we wanted to also remember Janet back there, as she still recuperates from her knee uh, procedure that she had done, but she's walking around well, and good to see her doing good also. Uh, Victor will be having, uh, I'm not going to say is it surgery or just a procedure. It's been, yeah, he's going to have to have knee surgery on his right. It's not a replacement. What he did, he tore his meniscus on both sides. Is that right? Am I saying that right? The meniscus on, on both sides. Plus, he's got a cracked kneecap. His kneecap, they cracked, but they're not going to do nothing with that. So they got to go in there and kind of shave it up and, and take all the stuff from, from around. Is that right? Is that, 
cleaned up, I guess that's what they call it. So remember Victor and Brad, so that's coming up for him. I guess he must have got jealous for Ginger and he... I think so. Do you think so? No, he, he wouldn't want this. He just had that fall and it just and it, it hurt him. So just remember him in prayer and he'll be, he's going to have to be doing that uh, real soon as far as that. So he's already been to an orthopedic doctor and everything. So just remember Victor in prayer and what he will be dealing with. Other prayer requests, concerns, Thanksgiving, or whatever you would like to share with us this morning. Debbie. Yes. struggle and still got many things because he is still paralyzed um, and, and so forth so she still has to take care of him but just remember them in prayer and pray for them uh, for strength and for guidance on what they're dealing with now as well. Appreciate that. Other prayer requests? Concern? Yes. Hang on. Yes. Yes. We need to keep her daughter in prayer. She she's battling some some addictions and some other things as well. So remember your daughter. We sure will. And pray for you as well. I'm making. Yeah, that's right. That's right. Yeah. It's good to have you here this morning, and and, uh, and so we'll keep. Yeah. <laughs> we'll keep you in prayer. Other prayer requests. Yes, Glenda. Okay. All right. She's not doing well at all. I'm sorry. Okay. All right. Also, my friend Barbara. Yes. Yeah, Barbara's ongoing battle that she yeah with her health and everything. Yes. Also, also pray for Debbie Garrett's mom and sister in Kentucky as well. Both of them. Uh, just remember both of them in prayer, and also the other family members as well, Misty as well as Missy. Both of them. Uh, with their health problems and what they too uh, are dealing with as far as with the family. So do do pray for them. We have Misty and Missy on prayer as well as uh, Miss Fulkerson and then you see Beverly Hill as De Debbie's sister. So do all, remember all of them in prayer, uh, Garrett family's uh, prayer list. So just pray for them and remember them also in prayer. Anyone or anything else? Just pray for the different people here that are dealing with other different things and other health issues, issues as well. Tinker with her ongoing battle that she has with her COPD and asthma and different things. Remember her in prayer. Milton back there with his uh, healing from his fall and um, his sternum and his back. Remember him in prayer. And, uh, and of course, again, others here that are dealing with different health issues. I want to pray for different ones. Um, allergy related or sinuses or whatever may be going on or other things that are taking place. Mandy, as she still battles and she still has her thing with her Crohn's that she battles from day to day, remember her in prayer and pray for her as well. Anyone else? Pray for each other. Just remember each other and pray. Even if you don't have anything going on, just pray for each other because we all battle different things in life and life is goes up and down and you never know what you're going to encounter from day to day. But with the help of the Lord, whatever you encounter, you'll be able to overcome. And you'll be able to stand the test of whatever may be taking place with the help of the Lord. But if you don't have the Lord, you're not going to be able to make it. So know for sure whether or not you do know the Lord in your heart and in your life, not just here, but have him right here. And ask him for strength every single day. Because when you get up in the morning, you never know what you're going to encounter. And you never know what may happen or what may take place. You need his strength every day. So pray for that. Always give thanks to the Lord for answered prayer. And as always, pray for those who do not know the Lord as their personal Savior. Let's go to the Lord in prayer. 
Almighty God, as we come before you again, Lord, we lift up all the prayers, all the concerns, the many things that are going on in all of our lives. Lord, we lift up the many, many people that are dealing with different health issues and health problems. Some are here, some at home, some in a hospital, and even some in nursing homes. We lift them all up, Lord, and we ask for your help, for your grace, and for your mercy. We pray for those that are traveling and for those that will be traveling. Watch over them, be with them, and help them. We pray for the many that are struggling and going through difficulties. The difficulties at work, the difficulties at home, and even the battles we battle within ourselves. The many things that we face, the many temptations that we face from day to day. Help us, Lord, to overcome those temptations that we may be able to walk with you as we should. That it may not hinder our walk, but Lord, that we can walk with you as we should. We pray for the many that do not know Jesus Christ as their Lord and Savior. Some are here, some at home, some we may not even know about. But there are many, many people that do not know you as Lord and Savior. And we pray for salvation, friends, family members, co-workers, and even strangers that we've never met. And we pray for them. Lord, we pray for the family and the friends of Gloria Rodriguez, who now is with you and is all better. But we pray for those who are left behind, those who, who will miss her. And we pray for comfort, for grace, and for help in the lives of those who are grieving and are hurting. But help them to know and understand that she is no longer grieving or hurting, and she no longer has Alzheimer's. But Lord, she is in the right frame of mind, and she is a whole lot better. And so we ask for help and grace for friends and family. Be with us this morning. Lead us, guide us, and direct us. Again, we lift up all the prayers and all the concerns and the many things going on in all of our lives. And this we ask in the name of Jesus. Amen. Let us stand as now comes leads us now in our offertory hymn, 410. It is well with my soul.
pray. Almighty God, again, we come before you. And Lord, we just thank you for your many, many blessings. Thanks for seeing to our needs and giving to us things needed in our lives. We come now and we give you back a portion of what you have blessed us with. And Lord, we just ask that you will see to it that all is collected, that it's used for the furtherance of your kingdom, for the spreading of the gospel. And Lord, may you bless both the gift and the giver. In the name of Jesus. Bibles this morning, turn if you will to Mark chapter 6 as we continue to look at things throughout Mark. Mark chapter 6 verses 14 through 19, John the Baptist and Herod and how Herod indeed beheaded John the Baptist. We will look at one who it was well with his soul and another it wasn't well with his soul. And so we want to look at this. Over the previous verses of Mark chapter 6 and 1 through 13, Jesus, when he went to his hometown, was not welcome. So he left his hometown of Nazareth, and he goes from village to village to preaching and teaching the Word of God. He sends out his 12 disciples, and he gave them the authority to cast out evil spirits, to heal people, to preach and to teach. So they went out and they taught, they preached that people should repent of their sin and turn to God. While preaching, they cast out demons and healed people everywhere they went who were sick. Well, Herod heard about what was taking place with Jesus and his disciples and about the works and the miracles they were doing. And he wondered and he was concerned. Had John the Baptist been raised from the dead? That all these miracles are being done by someone I beheaded? So he was actually concerned a person. Now understand some of the background of Herod Antipas. His father, Herod the Great, was appointed by Julius Caesar in 37 BC. Now, Herod the Great was an evil man as well as his son is here. Now, this Herod the Great, his father, was the same one who killed all of the, of the babies two years and under in Bethlehem in order to get rid of the Messiah. Because he says another king came when the, when, remember when the wise men came and said, where is the king who has been born king of the Jews? Herod says, oh no. Ah, there's no only one king and I'm him. And so that was his dad. So now we're going to see the son here. Herod Antipas, and what he does, and he was made king over the Jews after the passing of his dad in 4 BC, and so here he's made king over the Jews, and he is just like his dad. Ungodly, evil, he kills in order to survive and doesn't want anything else, he steals, 
He even stole his half-brother's wife, Herodias. Divorces his wife. She divorces her husband, and them two get married. And John says, this is not right. What you're doing is ungodly and is not of God. Well, they didn't like it. He was doing this out in public, so he had John put in prison for it. But now he, and we're going to see some things concerning this. Hopefully this will help us in our walk and our life as well. But we're going to see some things. So today, let us look at the episode that took place in history when John the Baptist and what took place with him between him and Herod and also his wife Herodias as well, coming from Mark chapter 6 and verses 14 through 29. Now, first of all, if you notice, Herod's concern in verses 14 through 20 of Mark chapter 6. King Herod heard about this. What did he remember? Well, I just told you. What he heard about? He heard about all that Jesus and his disciples were doing. For Jesus' name had become well known. Some were saying John the Baptist had been raised from the dead, and that is why the miraculous powers are worked in him. Others say this is Elijah. Elijah from the Old Testament who went up into a chariot and went alive into heaven with to God. But others still claim he is a prophet, like one of the prophets of long ago. But when Herod heard this, he said, John, the man I beheaded, has been raised from the dead. For Herod himself had given orders to have John arrested, for he had had him bound and put in prison. Now he did this because of Herodias, his brother's Philip's wife, whom he married. For John had been saying to Herod, it is not lawful for you to have your brother's wife. So Herodias nursed a grudge against John and wanted to kill him, but she was not able to. Why? Because Herod feared John and protected him, knowing him to be a righteous and holy man. Now when Herod, when Herod heard heard John, he was greatly puzzled, yet he liked to listen to him. Now, isn't this amazing? Now, Herod is a very superstitious man. I guess some people are superstitious, but he was a very stupid, superstitious man. He was afraid, as it says, uh, that John, and he was afraid of that maybe John, by some coincidence or what happened, came back to life after he heard all the miracles that Jesus and his disciples were performing. So, John had, prior to that, beheading him, John had boldly denounced the sin of Herod and Herodias, that what they did was ungodly. It was not right. Now, as we, as we read here, Herod did fear John, and he believed that John was a man of God, he was a prophet of God, to which, to which Herod was right. He was a man of God, he was a prophet of God, he was right. Now, notice, isn't this interesting? Herod put him in prison, he got him out of the public because he wanted to stop him from spreading all those things around about him and his wife Herodias and what they were doing. Because everybody else knew as well that he was a prophet and a man of God. So this didn't go well with him. So he put him in prison just to shut him up, to keep him out of the public hall. But now, remember, as he did this, he would go and he would listen to John while he locked John up in prison. But Herod never repented of his sin, nor did Herod do what was right according to the word of God spoken to him by John. He would like to listen to him. You know, I often wonder, think about it. How many people today do you think listen to preachers or evangelists or others, but yet their actions didn't change? But yet they still would like to listen to these preachers or the teachers, and yet they still do the same ungodly things. You know, think of 
today, how many people do you think have listened in the past to Billy Graham when he was alive? You have had thousands and millions of people listen to him. But did their lives change? Did they do what they were supposed to do? How many people in the past have listened, or uh, still maybe still do, listen to Pat Robinson? Or even some other people that come on that you might like listen to? David Jeremiah, Jesse Duplantis, Rick Warren, Charles Stanley, his son, Andy Stanley. Oh, and the list just goes on and on of people that say, oh, I'll listen to this person, or I'll listen to that person, or I've heard this person, or, or, or I've read the book by this person, or whatever the case may be, but they have never repented of their sin. And I'm sure each and every one of these has said you need to repent of your sin and put faith and trust in Jesus. And they would listen to these people, but yet their lives would never change. They would still go out and do the same ungodly things. And why? Because the heart has not been changed. Herod loved to listen to John, but he never changed. He was still the same. Never the same. He was still ungodly. You know, the Word of God says in Isaiah chapter 55 and in verse 6 and 7, Seek the Lord while he may be found. Call on him while he is near. Let the wicked forsake his way and the evil man his thoughts. Let him turn to the Lord and he will have mercy on him and to our God for he will freely pardon. You see? God says, come to me, and I will freely pardon you. I will help you. But you must turn from your wickedness. You must turn away from it and turn to the Lord. And did not Jesus himself, in his many excerpts and many talks as well, he too told the people, come to me, all of you who are weary and burdened, and I will give you rest. Take my yoke upon me and learn from me and and for I am gentle and humble in heart and you will find rest for your souls for my yoke is easy and my burden is light imagine so many we see so many today that are possibly like Herod they are restless souls Souls that have not given their heart and their life to the Lord. They hear the things of God. Maybe it soothes them. You know, it's almost like when, when, when King Saul, there was an evil spirit within him, and what soothed him was music. And when David would play the music, it would soothe him. But even that, he tried to kill David as well, when David tried to help. But there are so many... People today are like the restless souls, and the only one that can help is Jesus Christ. And when we try to tell people like that, they, they laugh at us, or they think we're insane, or we don't know what we're talking about. And yet here, Herod had the opportunity, had the opportunity after listening to Herod to do what was right, Repent of his sin and put faith in God. But he never did. There was the opportunity for him to do it. But he never, ever did it. So many people do the same thing today. We tell them, you know, you have the opportunity. You can do it. And you know, some of the answers are, well, I'll do it later. Or I'll maybe have an opportunity later. And that may be true. But you know, there are only so many opportunities. And then when they're gone, they're gone. And the Word of God says, he, he even said, He says, I'm only going to deal with man for so long. And that will be it. Here, Herod was talked to. I, 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 I would love to have known the conversation that he and John the Baptist had personally. Every time he would go down into the dungeon to talk with John and listen to some of the things that John the Baptist had to say, I would have loved to have been a fly on the wall and just listen to what John told him. 
and then to probably look at Herod as Herod just shook his head and walked away from what he knew was right. But you know, it happens even today. People know. Maybe they read the Word of God, or maybe they've heard from these people, and yet they let the opportunity get away from them. Then we have the second thing that took place. Now notice, Herod's foolishness, but also know Herodias' opportunity that she took in a bad way. Look at what happens now in verse 21 through 24. Now remember now, Herodias hated John because he was bad-mouthing her and, uh, and Herod and saying that the marriage was not right, which it wasn't. And so she hated him and she held a grudge, it said in verse 19. So look at what happens now in verses 21 and following. Finally, the opportune time came. On his birthday, Herod gave a banquet for his high officials and military commanders and the leading men of Galilee. Now, when the daughter of Herodias, his stepdaughter, came in and danced, she pleased Herod and the dinner guests. Then the king said to the girl, ask for anything you want, and I will give it to you. And he promised her with an oath, whatever you ask, I will give to you up to half of my kingdom. She went out and asked her mother, what shall I ask for? Her mother answered and said, the head of John the Baptist. Wow. Can you imagine? Herodias, Herod's wife, knew that Herod was a lustful old man. He knew what, she knew what type of a person she was even before she married him. And she had her daughter, whose name was, they think, is Salome, which is by, from history, dance a very pro provocative dance, a.k.a. a striptease dance, basically, that she did in front of a stepfather, as well as the men that were there, and everyone. Now, again, remember now, Herodias, she held a grudge and wanted John dead. So what did she do? She, this is not a coincidental thing that Herodias here is allowing. She is allowing her daughter to do this in order for her to get back at John and have him killed. She knew what type of a king Herod was. And she knew, probably, that her daughter, that he probably looked at her in a way in which she knew what kind of a man he was and how he wanted her, just like he wanted his wife. And so, here, she allowed her daughter to dance this provocative dance in order to lure Herod into giving her anything. And what does Herod do? He makes a foolish vow. If you notice, in it, he, he does this. And it, it says he danced in front of her and he says, I'll give you up to half of my kingdom. Now understand, he didn't have the right to even give her a quarter of her kingdom because understand, he was appointed by the Roman government to oversee all that. And he had no right to even give it to her in the first place. That's just like when Satan tells you, I will give you whatever you ask. That's like when he tempted Jesus and he says, I'll give you up to half of this kingdom. It wasn't his to give in the first place. Well, neither was Herod. He couldn't give it as well. Matter of fact, later on, Herod was exiled by the new emperor to Spain, where he and his wife supposedly passed away in Spain, exiled from Rome, from their office, because of the new emperor later on as well. So he didn't even have the right to do that, but here he makes this foolish vow, and he does it in front of all of these witnesses. And it's motivated how? Because of a foolish pride and a sexual perversion that Herod had. And he was bound by this honor because he'd done it in front of all of these men of all these people that he had done. Now let me just say something about a vow for us who are believers. In Ecclesiastes chapter five, 
and in verse 4 through 7, here's what the Word of God says concerning if we make a vow or oath, and if we are believers. And this is bound by believers now. When you make a vow to God, do not delay in fulfilling it. He has no pleasure in fools. Fulfill your vow. It is better not to vow than to make a vow and not fulfill it. Do not let your mouth lead you into sin, and do not protest to the temple messenger, my vow was a mistake. Why should God be angry at you and say, and destroy the work of your hands? Much dreaming and many words are meaningless, stand, therefore stand in awe of God. But now I will tell you another thing. What we ought to do as believers, that was the Old Testament, which is still valid, but also in the New Testament, here our Lord and our Savior Jesus Christ, here's what he says concerning a vow or oath for us believers. In Matthew chapter 5, five and verse 33 and following, here he, here he says, again, you have heard it said to the people long ago, do not break your oath, but keep the oath that you have made to the Lord. But I tell you, do not swear at all, either by heaven, for it is God's throne, or by earth, for it is his footstool, or by Jerusalem, for it is the city of the great king. And do not swear by your head, for you cannot make even one hair white or black. Simply say, sim simply let your yes be yes, and your no be no. Anything beyond that comes from the evil one. You see, we are to honor our word without having to go into a notary and saying, yeah, I promise, or you'll put your hand up and say, I do. Let your yes be yes and your no be no. Let people know that they can take you at your word. If you tell someone yes, then do it. If you tell them no, say no, I can't do that, or no, I'm not going to do that, or whatever the case may be. Now again, these vows, this is not applied to Herod. Why? Because Herod was an evil, ungodly person. He never believed in, in Christ, in the Messiah. But for those of us that are the Lord, this applies. And never should we make a foolish vow like we see here that Herod has done in front of all of these people. Now notice, what do we see here? Herodias she makes the most of the opportunity because she wants to have John the Baptist killed. And she knew that this would do it by allowing her daughter. She used her daughter. And let me tell you, Satan uses people today to go against the things of God. You see it happening everywhere. These things are all ungodly and of Satan. While Herod, he never took the opportunity to save his own soul. Amazing, isn't it? Of what we see here taking place. One does and the other one doesn't as well. And that brings us to the third thing that we see that happened in this thing. Herod and his execution of John the Baptist. <clears throat> the sad part of it all around now notice what took place here is the daughter goes back to mom and says, what shall I ask for? Now, what would you ask for if someone gave, if someone, if someone gave you a blank check? What would you put on that blank check? I'm going to put one dollar. Put two dollars. No, you would put a whole bunch. <clears throat> you would probably put millions of dollars on that blank check. <clears throat> So here, look at what happens. <clears throat> at once, the girl hurried into the king with a request. <clears throat> Here's what I want. I want you to give me right now the head of John the Baptist on a platter. Now, what is she going to do with a head? A dead man's head. The king was greatly distressed, but because of his oath and his dinner guests, he did not want to refuse her. So he immediately is sent to execution with orders <clears throat> to bring John's head. They, the man went and beheaded John in prison and brought back his head on a platter. 
He presented it to the girl and she gave it to her mom. On hearing this, John's disciples came. He took his body and laid it in a tomb. Amazing. Now again, remember, Herod did fear John. He did believe that John was a prophet, was a good man, was a man of God. But he was lost. He had an evil heart. And he gave way to the killing of John only because he feared men more than he feared God. He feared what men would say about him that he reneged on his word rather than fearing God and the people of God as well. He was a restless soul that never took the opportunity to give his heart and his life to the Lord. He never repented of his evil deeds or all that he had done. And again, I repeat, he feared men more than he feared God or even the person of God. He allowed the execution of John. And John here is the first martyr for Jesus in the New Testament. And the last of the Old Testament prophets that was sent by God. Yet, even in death, what do we learn? John was faithful. John being a witness and a representative for God, both by his word and his action, even if it meant death. It didn't matter to him. What mattered most to him was the fact that Herod was full of sin, that Herod needed the Lord in his life, even if it meant him being put in prison, even if it mean, meant him being dead, which it did. To him, what was more important was to, for him to tell Herod the truth. Herod, what you're doing is not right. You need to repent of this and turn to God. See, this is what's needed in our land today. And for our people, is turning to God and repenting of sin as well. But here, John the Baptist gives us an example that we need to follow today. You know, in 1 Corinthians chapter 10, and in verse 11 through 13, here, God's word says, concerning the warnings that took place and what happened to the people of Israel in history, you know why it was written down? He tells us here. He says, these things happened to them as examples and were written down as warnings for us on whom the fulfillment of the ages come. So if you think you are standing firm, be careful that you don't fall. No temptation has seized you except what is common to man. God is faithful. He will not let you be tempted beyond what you can bear. And when you are tempted, he will be able to provide a way out so that you can stand up under it. So again, they were written there. Well, it's the same thing today. The New Testament was written for us as examples for us of how and what we should be doing as well. John and the rest of them, all of them. What happened to John? What happened to James? What happened to Peter? And, and so many others that gave their lives, including our Lord and our Savior Jesus Christ, as examples of us to do what? Remain faithful. Remain faithful. No matter what. Don't fear men. Don't fear the king, the president, the government, or anything else. Again, remember what... Here, I'll remember what Jesus so spoke of and said as well in Matthew chapter 10 and verse 28 and following. As he so declared, he says, Do not be afraid of those who kill the body but cannot kill the soul. Rather, be afraid of the one who can destroy both body and soul in hell. Or not two sparrows sown for a penny. Yet, one of them will fall to the ground. But yet not one of them will fall to the ground apart from the will of your father. And even the very hairs of your head are numbered. So don't be afraid. You are worth more than many sparrows. 
Whoever acknowledges me before men, I will acknowledge him before my Father in heaven. But if whoever disowns me before men, I will disown before my Father in heaven. Understand, you only live once, but you can die twice. For a believer, you only face death once, and then after that you live forever and ever and ever. But for the unbeliever, you will die twice, both physically and spiritually. And the second is far worse than the first, because it is without God and not in heaven as well. But if you repent of your sin and put trust in Jesus, you will have eternal life. You will have, you will be cleansed from all of your sin that you have done. I warn you and I caution each and every one. Do not be like Herod, who had the opportunity, who heard the word of God and rejected it and did not give his heart and his life to the Lord. But be like people like Zechariah, Lazarus, Nicodemus, and many others that we read about as examples in the New Testament from the Word of God, who gave their lives and were faithful to God even to the very end. Take this opportunity that God is now giving you. Repent of your sin and put your faith and your trust in Jesus Christ as Lord and Savior. Don't allow it to pass by. It may not come again, but then again it may. But that's the chance maybe you, you're willing to take. But remember, I'm like Joshua. As far as me and my house, we will worship the Lord. But this, if this seems undesirable for you, then keep on walking. But if not, come to know Jesus Christ as Lord and Savior. Don't be like Herod. He was a restless soul. There are so many restless souls today, and the reason for it is because Christ doesn't live in their hearts and in their lives. Come to know Christ today as your Lord and as your Savior. Let us stand. Almighty God, as we come before you again, Lord, if there is anyone here this morning whom you have spoken to, who have you revealed yourself to, who have heard your words, I pray today they may take this opportunity and they come to know you, repent of their sin, and put faith and trust in you. We ask it in the name of Jesus. Amen. Turn to hymn number 275 as we sing this invitation and closing hymn. If God has spoken to you today, I surrender all. Then you come. Come to know Christ today. Have him as your Lord and your Savior, not just intellectually, but in your heart today.
it, and if God has spoken to you today, whether here or you looking at this on Facebook or YouTube, and if you need further counseling or if you would like to talk to someone and you live locally here, you can call at, at the church at 985-214-9343. And feel free to call, but if you're out of town or if you don't live near here, seek your local pastor or minister and talk to them further about your own eternal life. We only have today. So if you would like to seek or to talk to someone, feel free to call us and let us know if we can help you in your eternal life, your salvation, your relationship.